Okay, guys, let's go ahead and start talking about your Chapter 11 test review. Now, on number one, it says, uh, when Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes holds, which of the following can be an expression in ratio of small whole numbers? And the correct answer for this should be B. And it's the volume of gaseous reactants and products. Now, number two, it says equal volume volumes of ideal gases at the same temperature and pressure contain equal number of, and the correct answer should be C, particles. If we keep temperature, temperature and pressure the same, we have the same number of particles. Now, number three, it says at a constant temperature and pressure, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to its, and the correct answer should be B, number of moles. Okay? We know that our temperature and pressure are both held constant in both of these. So remember, we can relate particles to moles. Particles, moles, basically the same thing. Now, in number four, um, here it says the value of the gas constant, we're talking about the ideal gas law constant, is going to be, and the correct answer is number A. Make sure you're paying attention to the units here. Remember, it's 0 0.0821 but the units are very important. We have liters, atmospheres, moles, and Kelvin. Okay, make sure that we know that. And then number five, it says to use the ideal gas law to determine the molar mass of a gas, uh, the mass, the correct answer, the mass of any known volume of gas may be used. Okay, correct answer would be B. All right, skipping on down to number eight. It says in the equation, we have nitrogen plus hydrogen gas produces ammonia. It says one volume of nitrogen yields how many of ammonia? So we have our nitrogen and we have our ammonia and we see that we have a one to two ratio so it produces two volumes of ammonia. Number nine, it says the volume occupied by one mole of oxygen at STP is, and this is the molar volume, it is always 22.4 liters. Okay, going to go ahead and skip number 10. Don't worry about that. Moving on down to number 11. It says the ideal gas law combines Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Avogadro's law. Okay, remember we incorporate N or moles into the ideal gas law, and that's what separates it. Number 12, it says the ideal gas law is PV equals NR, capital R, capital T. Okay, Pivner, PV equals NRT. Okay. Go ahead and skip number 13. Let's go ahead and go down to number 14. Now, in number 14, it says in the equation where we have nitrogen uh, reacting with oxygen to produce nitrogen dioxide, uh, the volume ratio of nitrogen to nitrogen dioxide, if we look at it, we're looking at the coefficients, the numbers in front, and we see that we have a 1 to 2 ratio. And then 15 it says that the pressure of a gas uh, is directly proportional to the number of moles if both the volume and the temperature are constant. Okay, So the pressure is directly proportional to moles if volume and temperature are held constant. Okay, let's go ahead and move on down to 16 do some matching. Okay, uh, The question is at constant temperature and pressure the volume of gaseous reactants and products can be expressed as ratio of small whole numbers. And the correct answer for this should be C, and that is Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes. 17, it says equal, number, equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and the same pressure contains equal number of molecules. And this is expressing Avogadro's law, or E. Number 18, it says pressure times volume equals molar amount times and that is our ideal gas law constant. So the correct answer here would be A, the ideal gas law. 19, the rate of if effusion of gases at the same temperature and pressure is inversely proportional to their molar masses. Really don't worry about this one, guys. It's Graham's law. Don't worry about it. Don't need it. Number 20, it says the volume divided by temperature equals a constant when molar amounts and pressure are constant. And this expression is B for Charles' Law. All right, moving on down to 21. Uh, 21 says, when hydrogen burns, water vapor is produced according to the unbalanced equation. And it gives us this equation. If 
12 liters of oxygen are consumed, what volume of water vapor is produced? So it wants to know volume of water vapor. Okay, so it gives us in liters or a volume of oxygen. So we have to balance the equation here. We see that we have two oxygen, or we have two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two oxygens, only one oxygen. So we put a two here, which makes our hydrogen go to four. So we put a two there, and now it's balanced. And we're dealing with oxygen and we're dealing with the water vapor and the gas. So we know that one liter of O2, we're getting this from the coefficients, equals two liters of H2O, which is our water vapor. So we start our problem off with what it gives us. It gives us 12 liters of O2. Since liters of O2 is on the top, we put liters of O2 on the bottom, which is right here. One liter of O2 equals two liters of H2O. We multiply this out and we will get an answer of 24 liters of, and it's water vapor, which is H2O. Okay, guys, moving on to number 22. It says, what is the volume of 24 grams of oxygen gas at standard temperature and pressure? Now, here uh, we can work it out with using our standard temperature and pressure tells us that we know that one mole is going to equal 22.4 liters. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to get it into moles. Now, to go from grams to moles, we're going to use our mole ratio, or not our mole ratio, but our molar mass. And here we see that the molar mass of oxygen is 32, so we know that one mole of O2 equals 32 grams of O2. So we set it up uh, where we have starting with our 24.0 grams of O2. Grams is on top, so what goes on the bottom? Grams, we put our 32.00 grams of O2 equals one mole of O2. And since mole of O2 is on the top, we go ahead and change it into liters. One mole of O2 equals 22.4 liters of O2. And we work this out, multiply the top, divide by the bottom, and we should get an answer of 16.8 and that is liters of O2. All right, moving on to 23. It says the mass of a one liter sample of gas is 0 0.716 grams at STP. What is the molar mass of the gas? Now the main thing that we, we need to realize here is that molar mass, big M, equals our mass, which we get from right here, all divided by our moles of N. Okay, so what we need to do to figure this out is we have to work out a Pivnert problem. We have to work out an ideal gas law problem. So we have our PV equaling NRT. We're solving for N, so we're going to divide both sides by RT. And we see that we get rid of it and we get N by itself. Now, we look at it and we say, well, all we have up here is a volume. And yes, it is in liters, so we have that. We have R, which is our ideal gas law constant, which is zero, uh, 0 0.0821. Now, our pressure and our temperature are going to come from standard pressure and standard temperature. Okay, that's what STP means. So we're going to have it, and remember, ideal gas law, you have to have the units of liters, atmospheres, moles, and Kelvin. So our pressure is going to be standard pressure in atmospheres, which is 1.0 atmospheres, times the volume of 1.0 liters, all divided by an ideal gas law constant times our temperature which is standard temperature which is 273.15 Kelvin and this equals N. N equals uh, 0 or 0 0.04459 and we'll just keep that to whatever uh, about four or five decimal places and we keep our mass which is uh, 0 0.716 all divided by our moles of 0 0.04459 we divide that all out and we should get an answer right around 16 grams per mole okay guys moving on to 25 uh, it says what is the mass of it gives us 10 liters of chlorine gas gives us its molar mass at 27 degrees celsius and 3.50 atmospheres now it's asking us for the mass, but the first thing that we have to do is we have to 
uh, find N, meaning we're finding using our ideal gas all PIVNERT, P, V equaling N, R, T, and solving for N. So we're going to have N, which equals our P, V divided by our R and T. So when we plug this in, we're going to have a pressure of 3.5 atmospheres, a volume of 10 liters, we're going to have our ideal gas law constant, and we're going to have our temperature change to Kelvin, which is 300.15. And we're going to go ahead and take this and work it out and solve for N. Now we get for N is 1.420, and that would be moles. Now all we have to do from here is just change it from moles into grams. So we take our uh, 1.420 moles. Since moles is on the top, moles go on the bottom. We know that our molar mass equals one mole equals 70.9 grams of chlorine. We multiply that out and we should get an answer of 100.7 grams of chlorine. All right, guys, moving on to 26. It says, what is the volume of, it gives us two grams of uh, carbon sulfide vapor. It gives us its molar mass and it gives us the temperature. It's at 70 degrees Celsius and 726 millimeters of mercury. Now we got to do a little bit of converting here so that we can find the volume. We are going to use our equation PIVNERT, PV equaling NRT, except to start off with we got to convert some stuff. First thing, we have to change our 2.0 grams of carbon sulfide okay and we change that into moles okay because remember in PIVNERT we need liters atmospheres moles and Kelvin so we change it to moles remember we have grams on top so the 76.15 grams go on the bottom and that equals one mole remember guys this is the molar mass it always equals one mole so we divide this one out and we should get an answer of 0 0.026 moles now the other conversion that we have to do is we have to convert millimeters of mercury into atmospheres. Okay. Now to do that, all we do is we take our 726 millimeters of mercury and we set it up and we know that 760 millimeters of mercury equals one atmosphere. We go ahead and divide this on out and we should get an atmospheres of 0 0.953 atms. Okay, and we're solving here, we're solving for V. So our equation is going to look like we have volume equals our moles, which is 0 0.026, times R, which is 0 0.0821, times the temperature of 70 plus 273.15 gives us uh, 343.15 Kelvin. And we're dividing all of that by our pressure of 0 0.953. Okay, and we get, work all this out, and we will get an answer of right around 0 0.767, and that would be liters of carbon sulfide. All right, guys, moving on to 27, it says, what pressure in atmospheres is exerted by 0 0.75 moles of a gas in 5 liters in a container at 0 degrees Celsius? Okay, so we're going to use PIVNERT here. PV equals NRT. We're solving for P, so we have pressure, which equals our NRT all divided by our V, which we know that we will get for that. Our moles is going to be right at 0 0.750 moles. Ideal gas law constant is 0 0.0821. A temperature of, remember we have to change it to Kelvin, 273.15 Kelvin, all divided by, we have a volume of 5.0 liters. We work all this out and we should get an answer right around 3.36 atmospheres. All right, guys, now from here, moving on to 28. Now, 28 says a 200 milliliter sample of gas is collected at 20 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 700 and 
33.5 millimeters of mercury. So as the mass of the sample is 0 0.935, what is the molar mass? Remember that molar mass equals our mass divided by our moles. Okay, so here's our mass. So all we have to do is work out an ideal gas law problem, get PIVNERP, and we can solve for N. We know that N equals our pressure times our volume all over our ideal gas law constant times ten temperature. And we work this out. Now, main thing here is we've got to pay attention on this problem to units. Okay, Not, nothing's in the correct unit. So the first thing we have to do is for pressure, we have to go ahead and remember we're dividing by 760 and we would get a pressure of right around 0 0.965 atmospheres. Okay, that would be our pressure. Our volume is in 200 milliliters, which we divide that by 1,000 to get liters of 0 0.2. We divide it by our ideal gas law constant times our temperature. We change our temperature to Kelvin. Remember, we just add 273.15. We work all this out, and we get a moles right around 0 0.008. Okay. And all we do is we know that this is our mole, so that is N, and our mass comes from right there. We plug that into the equation and divide it out, and we should get an answer right around 116, and that is grams per mole. That's our molar mass. All right, guys, moving on to 29. It says, assuming all volumes measured are made at the same temperature and pressure, what volume of hydrogen gas is needed to react completely? And it gives us 6.55 liters of oxygen gas to produce water vapor. Now, the first thing that it doesn't tell us that we have to have, we know that H2 plus O2 produces H2O. Okay, we got this from a previous problem before. Remember, we balance it out, have twos in front of everything except oxygen. And from here, all we're doing is we're changing it from liters of oxygen two liters of water vapor. Okay, it's just one's volume. So all we have to do is we take our 6.55 liters of O2 and we're changing it to water vapor. We look up here and we see that our ratio is one to two. We're looking at the coefficients, the number in front. So we come here and we know that one liter of O2 equals two liters of H2O work this out and we should get an answer of 13.1 liters and that would be of H2O. Alright guys moving on to 32 and it says a quantity of chlorine gas that gives us its molar mass occupies a volume of 50 liters at 27 degrees Celsius and 721 millimeters of mercury. It says what is the mass of chlorine? So the first thing we have to do is we have to use PIVNERT and solve for N. So we know that N equals P, V over R and T. Remember we need liters, atmospheres, moles, and Kelvin. So we go ahead and we change our pressure into atmospheres and we do that by dividing by 760 and we get a pressure of 0 0.9487. And then we multiply that by its volume of 50 liters all divided by our ideal gas law constant and our temperature of 300.15 Kelvin. Okay, work all this out and we should get a moles of 1.925 and then all we do to change it into the mass is we go ahead and we multiply by the molar mass multiply by that number right there and we should get right around 136.48